Hello all, welcome back to Building Predictive Systems with Python and Machine Learning. We're in a new section about building our first model classifying iris flowers by petal length and width. And in this section, we're going to take a look at number one, exploring our first data set, number two, building our first model, and number three, assessing our model. Let's talk about exploring our first data set. In this video, we're going to take a look at three topics. So we're going to talk about what is the iris data set. Number two is what is the machine learning task associated with this iris data set. And number three is what are train test splits and features. Let's go in and take a look. So here we are back in our Jupyter Notebooks under Building Predictive Systems, where I'm going to just bring you through all of how we can build predictive learning systems in Jupyter Notebook, so it also teaches you how to use the popular tool in the data science community. The first thing to do is to get our data sets, right? So what we do is this data set is actually within scikit-learn already. To create the iris data sets within your Python memory, we actually, because the iris data set is such a classic data set to learn machine learning with, it actually comes with scikit-learn. First thing we need to do is from sklearn dot data sets import load iris and we need to create the data sets so we have iris data actually load iris let's look at iris data so iris data is a big dictionary so we have description we have the data itself and we have the feature names and the targets right so let's first look at the description so iris data is an iris plants database so it has 150 data points 50 in each of the three classes and it has four attributes four numeric predictive attributes and each attribute is described here we have sepal length sepal width petal length and petal width and there are three classes of iris. We have Setosa, Versicolor, and Virginica. Right. So this is the, our introduction to our first data sets, right? So let's talk in depth about particular features of this data set. So to do this, let's first print out the data. So I've printed this out actually with the pandas data frame so that we can discuss this in a more visual sense and again we can see all 150 data points in this table so a data point is very simple a data point is a collection of all the values of all the features in your data sets and the correct answer right so in the irish data sets we have three different types of flowers we want to classify and each type is denoted by a number so the type 1 is 0 type 2 is 1 and type 3 is 2 we also have these things called features so features you can think of it as features of the thing we are looking at right so in the iris data set a data point is represents an individual flower right so the flower has many features right a flower can be tall wide different colors etc and in particular in the iris data set the features that are present in the data sets are the sepal length sepal width and petal length and petal width of the individual flower measured and also what type of flower it is right so here we have the first type of flower which i believe should be iris setosa and this setosa flower has a sepal length of 5 cm sepal width of 3.5 cm petal length of 1.4 cm and petal width of 0.2 cm so always visualize in your head that actually each data point it's not just a set of numbers but it's actually an actual flower or maybe it's an actual house actual person actual picture actual fashion item whatever it is always remember that machine learning is about discovering truth and patterns in the real world so have the real world in your head in this case we have measured four features from the flowers and these four features are 
the first four columns and the target is the type of flower that is associated with or, or the type of flower that we've measured. And so let's talk a little bit about the machine learning task we're under here. So here we're trying to use the features of the flower to predict what type of flower it is because there are only three types of flowers and there you can only be one of three types. This is what's called a classification task where you're trying to predict a group or a label. This opposes or mirrors what's called a regression task where you are trying to predict a number that is continuous, right? So you're trying to predict a number where there are no separation between nicely bucketed classes and there are also no predefined classes, right? So you can predict any number you want, but then you obviously have the target as a bunch of dots on a real number line. And the idea is you want to predict the right dots every time you are presented with a particular feature. The last thing I want to talk about is this idea of a train test split. So imagine if you're building a predictive system on a data set like Iris and you have 150 data points like this. If you have trained your predictive system on this 150 data point, you then have nothing to do, right? Because you can't test this predictive system. You can't validate this predictive system. All you can do is say, okay, I've used all my data. I can't conceivably say I have trained my whole data sets, put trained my whole model on the data sets, and then I'm going to test the data or to test the model on a subset of the data because the model has access to that data. It can just remember what is in the data and show you the right answers. So the only thing you can do is to expose this predictive system in real life into new unseen data that comes in organically and hope that it works, right? Because you have no idea whether this data set is the same as all the data that's coming forward. You hope that it is. You hope that your data and a model together has found the general patterns in the data. And so it could generalize forward when we have new unseen data, but you don't know that. So the idea is to split your data sets into three sets. We have the training sets, which is typically 60 to 70% of data sets where you use to expose this data set to the model. You have the testing sets, which is the remaining, let's say 15, where you use it to test your model so that you can do train your model on a training set, test it in the test sets and back and forth until your test set performance, which is not exposed to the model, but it's just used to test the model until your test performance is good. And then the last 15% or 20% of the data is called a validation set. So only after you're happy with the test set's performance, do you try it on a validation set? The idea being when you are, as a data scientist, when you look at the test sets and test your models on the test sets, no matter how much you don't expose that test set data into the model, you as a data scientist still learn from the characteristics of these test sets, right? So eventually the data and the characters in the test sets will leak into your model and your model would behave a certain way because you have seen some behavior in the test sets. So then the test set is again no longer unbiased and simulating new unseen data, which is why you have the validation set, which is the actually the ultimate test of whether your model works and you should use it as little as possible and you should never look at what's in the validation sets. You should only look at it as, oh, you know, this is how my model would perform and if we were exposed to some unseen data. So that's the idea of a train test split. For any given data set, for example, the Iris data set, we have 150 data points. We'll split it and say 120 or even 100 goes into the training set. We'll use 100 to train our model. We'll then test our model on 25 of the new data points or the remaining data points to see how our model works. If it doesn't work well or if we're going to improve it, we then go back to the 100 and try to tweak the parameters. And then after we're happy with this, we then use the last final 25 to judge how good our model is. And that's all there is to it. We talked about the iris data sets, which is 150 data points of iris flowers. We talked about the machine learning task, which is classification. We talked about train test splits, which allows us to simulate what happens if our model sees new data. 
and we talked about features which are features of the underlying thing that the data points is measuring in this case features are the features of flowers that 150 flowers that were measured in the iris data sets